Hi folks. I gotta check the stream. I don't I'm not sure what's going on. It looks like it's not streaming properly. So that'll take a couple minutes. I came on a little bit early. Just give me a moment and I'll check it when it pops up here. It usually takes like 15 seconds. And it should pop in any second. I've been streaming 15 seconds on this one. So there you go, it just jumped. I should show up. Hang on. Hi folks. I gotta check the stream. I don't I'm not sure what's going on. It looks like it's not streaming properly. Yeah, it's streaming good. Now let's let the bashing begin. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm going to offend everybody out there at some point. Uh, that's just the way it is because I'm going to call it as I see it. And that's going to offend people that like people that I call out. And I've seen a lot of that over the last seven, eight years. I've been at this a long time. And I don't call people out for no reason, first off. Um, but I understand, right? I understand where everybody's coming from. So I'm going to, this is about Arnie Gunters, and, and so I'm just going to play the clip first, right? That whole piece. So I know it's rolling. Hi, Mark. Hi, Sergeant. Hi, Fan. Filtration. Julie West. Snulip. Let me see how a few people. Steve Meyer. Aviator. Cindy. I wait for Albert uh, from Aviator. Mickey. Moments not anymore. Elizabeth. Yeah, I'm pretty well going to offend everybody at some point because sadly that's just the way it works out. And I've seen a lot of that over the years. And a lot of them came back and apologized after. I told them fuck off. Uh, but anyway, here's the here's defending peace. Let's begin, shall we? Nuclear, gas, oil, and coal proponents claim that the sun doesn't shine at night and therefore a renewable electric grid is impossible. These same people and corporations are wedded to an old power industry paradigm that asserts that it's possible to safely store the most hazardous radioactive substance known to man for a quarter of a million years. Well, I contend that if scientists can safely store toxic nuclear material for thousands and thousands of years, then scientists are certainly capable of designing electric storage that will last overnight. In fact, solar storage technology is already available. So, you gotta realize what he just done there. The implications that he does all the time like this. It's very structured. You gotta understand how grammar works too. There's eight, it's an 800 page book. And each page don't have just one instruction about grammar on it. There's a reason for it too. Grammar is that control grid. Now, what he had done there is he employed, you know, he, he kept that lie alive by implying that the, if they could do this, then why can't they come up with storage solutions? Now, storage solutions for energy has been around for 100 years. It's asinine to do things that way, unless it's structured. And so when it's structured like that, subliminally, people get drawn right in. And I, I understand that. And that's why I made the video tonight. Because I'm not talking to you at all. I'm talking to Ernie. I really am. And that was the idea of that video that I put out tonight, earlier. And it's not just that. I don't just, like, hear something and then, ah, I'm going to make a video and throw it out there. It's because that's the straw that finally broke the camel's back. That's how I work. I go through all the avenues. I know Arnie as good as you do. I really do. And I have to listen to everybody. And I have to analyze everybody. And so, tomorrow night is going to be a whole hour on Arnie from my file. And it's not going to be pretty, unfortunately, sadly, pathetically. It's just rotten that I'm here tonight and every night because I got no choice because the narratives that I'm hearing out there are meant to lull people in to misinformation and misdirection a hundred percent that's what uh, grammar is all about 
And that's why the nuclear, there's no such thing like, a, once again, as a nuclear scientist that's not a lobbyist. Right? He doesn't get up on all the mainstream media. He doesn't get to jet set all around the world. He doesn't get all the airtime everywhere because he's effective at all. It doesn't work that way. And people that want to live in that paradigm should go back to Fox News and everybody else because that's not what I'm here for tonight. And people that are pumping their channels and their shit all the time on my site, stop fucking doing that, okay? If people want to talk about Obama and shit all the time in my videos, stop fucking doing it. Okay, this is about Fukushima. This is about the fact that somebody has to come out and counter the gatekeepers and then the sleepyheads and then the people that don't even accomplish anything. By doing that, he sets everybody back. By using that routine, and I'll say this for tomorrow night, and I'll just end it there. And let's listen to it one more time, and let me break it down for you. Nuclear, gas, oil, and coal proponents claim that the sun doesn't shine at night. First off, right, the sun is the nuclear melted cores at Fukushima. Think about that, okay? And therefore, a renewable electric grid is impossible. These to, re to, to change the electrical grid is impossible. Of course it's not. This is obsolete technology we're talking about. Same people and corporations are wedded to an old power industry paradigm that asserts that it's possible. Now then he shows these things in a, a 45 gallon drums in, a, in like a salt flat dug into a hole. These things are supposed to be in a sarcophagus, period. Right? They're supposed to be in a sarcophagus, not in a hole in the ground. Okay? That's the subliminal brainwashing by introducing that and lulling people with that way he talks. He's very, everything is very regulated, including the way he breeds. Possible to safely store the most hazardous radioactive substance known to man for a quarter of a million years. For a quarter of a million years. And that's why they're dumping it all into the ocean, because they can safely store it for a quarter of a million years. That's why Hanford has 450 billion, not million, but billion gallons dumped directly into the ground. Because they can safely store it for a quarter million years. That's why they're firing 1.25 million, I'm sorry, 2.25 million depleted uranium rounds a month in Iraq for about nine years. Because they can safely store it in containers for a quarter million years. But that's what people take away from that line. And there's more to that. And I'm going to cover it tomorrow night extensively. Let's go down that road. Well, I contend that if scientists can safely store toxic nuclear material for thousands and thousands of years, then scientists are certainly capable of designing electric storage. Right? And so how can you miss that link? How can you miss that link he just made to that time? So if they can do that, then they can do this. He could have said, they can't do that. That's why they dump it in the ocean. And they've been doing this for 100 years. He's not saying that we need to redevelop. He's saying we're re we need to create the technology. We don't need to create that technology. That has been around for over 100 years. But it's the pictures, the background, the speech, the implications, and just a nonchalant way that he tosses it in there. Once again, like every other video, it's a good video, and he got to throw a couple of turds in the punch bowl. That's meant, because I'm telling you the opposite all the time. I'm showing you the opposite all the time. I put an amazing amount of time and energy and effort into showing you the, the actual facts all the time. And then what happens is, I got no choice. I can't take it anymore. And I got to let these people know that I'm sick of this, and so I'm here every night. And so people are going to attack me. People, that's I don't give a shit. Some of it's orchestrated, some of it's genuine. I don't give a shit. I've been at this for years and years and years. I've seen the best out there come after me. I've seen everything out there come after me. I picked on everything on the planet. Because they left themselves wide open. They left themselves, and they're indoctrinating people and lulling people into thinking that they can store it away for a quarter million years when they dump it 
in the 45 gallon drums and then off the side of the ship in the fog or far out to sea or off the Somalia coastline or 2.25 million rounds a month in the people's homes in Iraq and Afghanistan where you got 5 million refugees or 5 million orphans, you got millions of refugees, you got millions of refugees from Iraq full of depleted uranium, they can't even have a baby anymore in Fallujah because of depleted uranium, they don't store that stuff safely, they got 1.1 billion tons of it they got to get rid of, and they dump it in the ocean, they dump it in your garden, they dump it in your landfills, 40 miles of open pits at Hanford, 450 billion gallons besides that dumped into the ground itself, not buried in the ground, but dumped in the ground. It's a big difference. And then we got Fukushima down there. And instead of country coming out and saying, you're going to destroy the ocean. I worked at 70 nuclear power plants. You got to listen to me. We get something done then. Instead they got to come out with, if scientists can shift it away for a quarter of a million years, they can fucking well make something to store power overnight. What the fuck does that mean? And you don't think I'm going to come out with a video? Because he does this all the fucking time. Just the other day, he's talking about 911 and how the terrorists come in there. And then when somebody phones him in and asks him about chemtrails, he says, well, I'm not an authority on this stuff. And I got a whole list of this stuff. And it's just the straw that broke the camel's back. Kind of like no men and lizard. Tonight, broke my back. Try to, anyway. They're fucking gone. Maybe you need to fuck off, lizard. You cranky little bastard. It's people like that, that even when you show them the facts, and you lay it out for them, they still got to come in and try to attack you, because they know better. Gatekeepers. Broke his heart. Too fucking bad. Broke my heart. Do you think I like doing this? Do you think this is a fucking joke? Do you think this is fun? Do you think, <laughs> do you think what? I got, I haven't got a life? Do you realize the carnage this thing has already done to us? And gatekeepers like that ain't gonna do anything because they're gonna lull people into that nonsense. Utter fucking nonsense. I'm gonna turn my part tomorrow only for over an hour, so let's move on. It is what it is. That's the facts. I'm not just going to go out and tear somebody up for something to do. Where's the fun in that? How are you going to pull that one off? Then everybody can take it then and use it to bludgeon you with it. But when it finally breaks, the straw finally breaks your back, what are you supposed to do? Calicut got her folder there too, so... I guess anybody who likes her will be fucking tearing into me soon. Because I just need that other straw now. I'm getting to that point with these people. And I don't apologize for not, uh, when I'm not wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll apologize, heartbeat. I won't do it. The only reason I do it, because the straw has broken my back. Go fuck off, lizard. I'll get rid of you now. Go get yourself a nice, nice new ghost account. Come back and bug me later. The point is, that when you tell people and show people the reality of it, and you don't want to accept it, what are you supposed to do? You know, what are you, what are you going to do with people? Just ignore it and move on. That's the trick. That's all you can do. The reality of it is that if we don't get this together, we're going to lose all the coastlines. Right? You seen Tonga is destroyed? You seen the Philippines is destroyed? You think that's not going to come over here? Like I've been saying for the last 90 days, what's going on? You know, once again, the world has to accept there is a change, and the change is going to be for the better, not for the worst. The change is not going to be an apocalyptic nightmare. The change is going to be getting rid of the old, the old uh, useful idiots that have been destroying civilization forever and have been born into their positions. Get rid of all, getting rid of all of that, that's got to go. And we need to take what we got and work for a thousand years to repair it. There's no more time for this nonsense. 
of to sing same song and dance. No one will willing to stand up for the planet Earth or the animals or the plants or the humanity or the children that are walking through the buckyballs all the time. We're in to a I don't care I don't care about you, lizard. Right? You're fucking nobody. You're uh, not even two ships in the night, man. I don't give a fuck about you. I'm here to put out the facts. And then when people don't want to look at the other side of it, and even when it stares them in the face and wants to deny it, I haven't got the time for that. I haven't got time for dummies, okay? You either get it or you don't get it. I'm not going to spend my time... You know, trying to force people to understand it. I just want to deal with the people that are paying attention. It is what it is. I mean, it's like Busby the other night. Some people were heartbroken. That's life. You know, all of these people... I got 800 plus videos on this site. And there's a lot of people there. And that's why I made the video. Is because they have the opportunity to do the right thing. They have the ability to do the right thing. And they just won't do it because they won't get the invitations anymore. They won't get the engagements anymore. They won't get the fees anymore. They won't get the notoriety. They won't get into the history books. They won't get invited um, to the wingdings all the time, see? And so they put all of that ahead of everything that they say. And so then they try to, they try to fit in. I'm not trying to fit in. I'm trying to stay alive. Trying to save a few people, trying to organize the realities so that people got a real narrative. And I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do a visit every night. I, you know, the reality of it is that everybody that we got out there that we put our fate into have let us down, have failed us. Japan failed us first, but we failed Japan. We allowed uh, international corporations to go in and steal everything they have. We took away their hope. We took away their morals and their cultures quite a long time ago. And then we never left it alone. And then we allowed the Yakuza's to run mad down there and take over and actually do most of the contracting for... And that's another thing about, you know, Arnie always calls it nuclear power plants. They're not nuclear power plants. They're nuclear military industrial complexes, period. None of them are power plants. They're all about making isotopes. They're all about solving the equations for the military industrial machine, for weapons and engines, directed energy weapons and engines. Another, I, could have, I could have tore that video apart all night. I just decided to go and bash them because everything else has to, it has to be done sometimes. He has to learn that if he's going to be out there lying and saying shit that shouldn't have been said, that people are going to come out now and stomp that nonsense into the ground. And stop it! You don't need to be doing it. You're destroying our only opportunity to deal with it by always keeping everybody in the fucking dark when you're supposed to be the guiding light. You're supposed to be the lighthouse on our coastline and instead you're buried in the fog all the time. On purpose. You allow yourself to be. Why, you haven't made enough money working for 70 nuclear power plants? You gotta st get everybody to give you donations and you can't once come out and tell them, we gotta do something now. It's always this drone voice and these creepy friggin' pictures in the background that are out of context. Talking about sarcophagus by showing you drums in the ground in a hole. That they sh they're not supposed to be into the nuclear the nuclear agency regulatory licenses. We're going to be put in a sarcophagus for a quarter million years, and they just dump it in the ground, open pits. And the agency, yeah, what are you going to do? Well, people don't know that. People don't understand that. And the people we turn to to inform us of stuff like that, they don't do that. They don't shove it down the media's throats, because they won't get back up in the media. And so they, they're their own gatekeepers on top of that. And that's a safe place to be. You get lots of speaking engagements, you make lots of bucks, you get lots of TV interviews, you get flown all over the place. 
Everybody thinks you're a superstar until the day they all die of cancer because we're out of control. The worst thing out there that people turn to is the ex-employees of the industry itself. All of them are compromised. Every one of them can be compromised. And they're only put out there, if you show up out there as the darling, as the sweetheart in the media, they're gatekeepers. They always have and they always will be, and that's the only thing that'll ever get up there. They're not going to put me up there. <laughs> right? They're not going to invite me up to CBC. They're not going to invite me on the BBC. They're not going to invite me on anything. Period. It's just not going to happen. And I can tell it like it is. I can tell it very crystal clear. You won't have to hear it a second fucking time to know that there's Chernobyl is one third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. And that Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. And that the reactors at Fukushima, the one, two, and three that are melted down 100%, Chernobyl's only 30%, so that's nine times worse. Reactor number three is two million times worse than every other reactor on the planet. That's 18 million times worse than Chernobyl. And I cover all the rain, I cover all the news, I go back through the dates, I join it all together for everybody. Because I you can't go out and find it. I can't go out and find the narrative. I had to build the narrative from scratch. The file papers are below this video. A couple of thousand pictures from TEPCO's websites are available to everybody down below this video. In the hopes that Everybody else can do what I'm doing. They can find something that, that's reasonable there and come out and get on the gatekeeper's asses. We gotta put an end to it, period. And the only way to do this is to destroy their narratives, like bananas, like putting it away in a sarcophagus for a quarter million years. And you gotta watch out for the subliminal that's coming out with these um, you know, these recycled lies that they've been throwing down our throats for many years. Oh, you know, the ocean radiation is uh, its natural. It's got natural uranium in it, Dana. Why are you worried? Well, natural uranium, you can take a bath in it every day. Not going to hurt you. Not going to give you cancers. Unless it's coming from the Pacific. But generally, salt water is not going to hurt you. can't hurt you. People swim in it all the time. But if you filled it up with uranium-234 or uranium-235 or uranium-238 or plutonium-238, 239, 240, 241 or iodine-129 with a 15 million year life, you know, it'll burn the skin off you before you even get in it. It'll kill you before you can even get in it. And so the bananas, well, I can fill the room up with bananas, can't hurt me. But they like to throw that out there all the time. I've heard, I got the videos of Guntry using that for the last couple of years, the word, the bananas. Oh, I always like the background radiation of bananas. And I got the rest of them doing it too. Not anymore, because they know better. Right? Why did they stop using it after we went out and destroyed it? Right? Then radon came out. Chris Busby. Well, radon, you can't find radon on a beach at 12 and 1400 counts. You can't even find that in somebody's basement at those counts. You might find 1.2 in someone's basement. So you're not going to find 1,400. The only way you're going to get to 1,400 is because there was 20 million becquels of iodine-131 in a liter of rain in that same spot. But rain doesn't fall by the liters. But that's how they measure it. If you drink it, it'd kill you on the spot, 20 million becquels. Every second, non-stop. And then more range come down. That's another 20 million. That's 40 million. That's 60 million. Another liter. Right? See how that works? And then for every three Beckwells, there's a, of uh, iodine-131, there's 129. So 20 million means 5 million Beckwells of iodine-129. But you can't have any of it with uranium. You can't have any of it with the plutonium. And then you have the sulfur that was sprayed on... This is serious. This stopped being a joke a long, long time ago. They've been doing it around this planet forever. But this is over the top. The first words out of anybody's mouth in the media is they're, 
They're going to kill the Pacific in a couple of years. That'll get things in gear. Then we have universities working on it. But as long as we got people out there suggesting that they can keep it in a container for a quarter million years, nothing will ever happen. And by then it's going to be too late. Right now it's too late for the Philippines. 235 mile an hour winds. 195 mile an hour sustain. If you put your arm out in that, it got torn off by projectiles. You won't hear Ernie talking about that. Directly because of radiation. You won't hear Calicott talking about that. It's a direct result of radiation. Gammas and bettas are moving at 270,000 miles per hour. Per second, rather. That's energy. Once again, think of the skateboarder. The more energy he's putting out, the faster he's going. Think of the storms, the typhoons are picking up all these isotopes, all this radiation, and at 270,000 miles a second, it's popping out energy forever. And so that storm's not going to get more powerful? That storm is not going to destroy 44 provinces like the Philippines? Those storms are not going to destroy Tonga six, seven days ago? Don't matter, it's only 8,000 people, right? Fuck them. Media never even bothered to mention them. Because they don't want you to know about two storms in a row. That one was 178 miles sustained. If you were there and you were hanging on your kid, it'd tear it out of your arms and you never see a kid again. That's coming here. That's coming to the entire Pacific Rim and a whole lot of other places. And if we don't get rid of the gatekeepers and the sweethearts and the darlings who won't tell them nothing, who won't regurgitate a bloody thing worthy of it. The reality of it. We're in a lot of trouble. Already. Period. We lost the Philippines and we lost Tonga. California, Vancouver is probably next. Within a year, one of them are going to get whacked. By an F4 tornado. That's 100 miles wide. That's not supposed to be on this planet. The biggest ones on this planet up to, up to the Philippines, F4 tornadoes, have been a quarter mile wide. And lasted for like a minute. These things lasted for four hours. They tore the highways out of it. This is real. And I haven't got time for people whose hearts are broken that are faking it as far as I'm concerned anyway. Just fake, fake, faking it. And then when you come out and you bash one of the darlings, they show up. Because you show them the truth and it doesn't matter. Because that's not what it's all about. It's about preserving the order that has been around forever and that has been controlling the narratives and has got us all in a big pickle. And I'm here to knock that out of your fucking brain. I'm here to, to, to grab you and pull you right out of that little paradigm and set you fucking free. That this is serious. That if you live in California, your child is playing in millions of beckles of iodine-129. Fuck iodine-131. By the way, that turns to iodine-132. And that's nine times easier to ionize your thyroid. So why don't they mention that? Why don't they say it's 20 million beckles of iodine-132? Because that's what it is. Why don't they say it's 5 million beckles of that is going to be iodine-129? Why do they say 20 million beckles of iodine-131? Right? Why don't they mention the uranium and the plutoniums? Why do they mention that there's 30 times more strontium whenever they mention the word cesium? Right? We got the numbers for cesium all over the country. 650 million beckles per second per kilometer here in Canada. But that's strontium-134 and 137. But you can't have that without 30 times, or cesium-134 and 137, but you can't have that without 30 times more strontium. Because it's produced at the same time. Right, and all these gatekeepers, they won't go down and wake the crowd up. They won't even try. They'll mention numbers here, and that's it. In the next show, they'll mention a number over there. I'll tell you a whole lot of numbers in a row, and that connects the dots for you right quick. That we done a show the other night, all the way from Alaska, all the way down to the eastern seaboards, of radioactive 
followed in rain from mainstream media, from universities, from institutions, from professors of iodine 131. Every friggin' one of them. 18,000% higher here, 33,000% higher there, 100 times higher here than normal background radiation. What do you mean normal background radiation? You always got to throw that out there. And so it's easy to fall into that lull, but they want to use it in context with bananas or rocks or walking down the streets. And the harm from that is devastating. That's devastating that they get away with it each and every time. And uh, those days are numbered. Not only because a great big super cell typhoon might just take out their house and their entire communities, but because we got no choice, right? We got to push the lawyers back. We got to set things right. We got to correct the madness and the indoctrination and the propaganda machines that are assimilated in every aspect of everybody's life. I can't watch TV anymore, I haven't for many years. I can't listen to corporate music anymore. I can't stand it. I can't stand the radio. I can't stand the CD players playing in anywhere I go. I can't stand it. It's canned music. It's canned this. It's canned that. And it's meant to keep you in a paradigm. you got to break free. You know, you, no, there's no links in the chat, Scott. You got to break free, and then you got to look at jet streams of how that's laying the pollution on your communities, on your coastlines, you know, on your playgrounds of your children. When Canada, there's a link below to the study where Canada, the Canadian government, Health Canada, no less, allowed school children in British Columbia to go to school and play outdoors during a snowstorm of radioactivity of real serious stuff. They went out and mapped it and they never warned anybody for 18 hours. That's the utter betrayal. That's a betrayal beyond imagination. Russia abandoned 7,500 communities, 9,000 square miles because it became radioactive. Canada, they don't care. America, not going to say nothing. Keep collecting their checks that the government, you know, are making. They're not going to get a pension anymore. They're loading the system at the same time. But there's, this is going to fall apart now. Because they, they know. They knew all of this. And a lot of them did want to say something, but they, it was a national security. So the death plumes that were going to come in and kill people, they made a national security, but they got to grow up your children because they might be freaking terrorists. Right? they got to implement this police state and think, make you think that you're locked in and that you're, you're a prisoner and that you can't do nothing, that you're, you have no power. Well, they're wrong. The most powerful thing you've got they can never take away from you is your voice. It's your presence. It's a very powerful thing if you choose to use it. And you have to use it. You have to learn to use it. Imagine if we had a million people calling out these friggin' rats. Right? Story breaks and they're out there lying. One of the pundits are out there saying, oh, it's just like the background radiation on a banana. And a million people come out and scream at him, tell him to shut his yap. You won't see him up on any other media anymore. They'll get that message. And they'll hope nobody else, and they'll make sure nobody else says that up on TV for a long time. And then if they slip up and say it, everybody comes out and tears them apart again, they're finished. That'll reverberate right around the planet. We're not there yet. Hi, Scott. Judy. Sudo. DC. Try. By the way, Try, I like your music. Don't spam it on my video all the time. I don't mind once or twice, but I got 3,000 artists, and they don't put that there on my site not once, right? But you got good music, man. You're a very talented person. I'm not saying that. Okay? And this is a serious discussion. And um, I'm seeing that show up a lot of times after video renders. So the first comment people read when they come to my video is going to be yours. Repeatedly. That's not a good sign, right? I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying don't do it so much. You know, I'll use your music in a video if you like. And uh, I can send everybody over to your site that way. Because you're really talented. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying my 
these videos are not for people to be spamming. And I've been at this a long time, so I'm not trying to be offensive, Troy. Hi, Carl, Sergeant, Kate. I'm just being blunt. That's just unfortunately the way I am. Hi, Bob. Hi, Annabeck, Pam, Missing Sky, Candace, Janet, Sylvia, Scott Green. No, Scott, it's too much work, boy. You go do a green screen, okay? I'm fucking blogging. Hi, Judy. Hi, Lunar. Mickey. DC uh, Janet. DC Baboos. Yeah, if not for the humor. Who are we hanging tonight? We were supposed to hang Japan, but I got sidetracked. Because of fucking nonsense. It's just nonsense that I got to come out tonight and play that video tonight, but now I'm going to come out tomorrow night, probably the night after, and fucking finish the job. I'll bring a shovel. Because I'm going to bury that tomorrow night, period. With about 20 different Arnie Guntry uh, moments that have found their way into my folders. And I could have done this a long time ago, but I don't want to. I got no choice when that straw breaks the back, you know? There comes a point when you can't just do it anymore. And when the damage becomes worse. And so I know there's going to be blowback every time I do stuff like that. I don't care. That's life, man. I can't decide what's going to break my back. And it, no, it doesn't break my back. It breaks, breaks my heart that the people I rely upon to at least be uh, honest and to not be manipulative or, you know, subliminal, or that's exactly what they're up to all the time. I mean, Bud's be talking about Radon. Dirtbag. Well, man, yeah, he was ex-military, right? He's ex, um, he's ex, uh, defense, was it? Department of Defense. And Guntry worked for 70 nuclear power plants. His old lady's, uh, ex-journalist. Well, name a journalist out there that told the truth. Oh, Dana, you can go read this one. You don't want me to do that, okay? Because I'll go look at everything else they do, and it won't take me long to destroy them. With no integrity and no honor, that's what a journalist is. You can't have the job unless you're willing to uh, destroy people at the same time to hold on to that job just to get the job. And it's uh, then you have to go to producers, and you just get browbeat. No matter how enthusiastic you are, you'll learn your place in a hurry because you won't have a job. You do what you're told, you read the teleprompter, and you sell it. And so anybody that was a journalist for a long time, they sold out big time, unimaginable to their loved ones and their families and their friends and their viewers by repeating lies for a paycheck, right? You can't, you, you can't have it both ways. That's the problem. And so nobody's willing to sacrifice. Oh, I am. I'll sacrifice it all for the right thing. I proved that many times, I think, if anybody was paying attention, is that, you know, when I was doing that today, a couple of friends were here, and they were like, Dana, you're not going to post that. You're going to break people's hearts. And I was like, what am I supposed to do? And I was, just, it was just rendering when they showed up, and I didn't even want to show it to them because I knew what would happen because they know that this whole scenario... And I was like, ah, you don't want to watch that. And they were like, no, come on, let me see it. And I was like, no, I don't want to show that. And they're like, they click, click. And I was like, okay, well, let me check the volume because I don't want to be blasting and blah, blah, blah. And he started laughing. He said, oh, my Jesus, Dana, what do you got done? You know what that's going to do? And I said, well, what am I supposed to do? Do, do? do I avoid it because I'm worried about somebody's going to unsubscribe from me or call me names or what hurts me the most is when you show them the truth and they don't accept it because that means they're rats or they're dummies or they're just like literally brainwashed and are too angry and I just don't have time for it I don't give a fuck okay I really don't I can't babysit everybody's emotions that's not what what I'm doing here it was never meant to be that way but I understand that but I don't have the patience for it anymore because I've been attacked so much through this game of befriending me and then stabbing me in pertinent uh, videos 
for like almost eight years now. I've seen it all. I mean, I've had them come after me with 500 truck driving accounts, all transport truck drivers, in one day. Just mob me. Unbelievable. And when a journalist gets their hands on a scoop because they're high and drunk or just good citizens, I can't imagine that part, uh, and they say the wrong thing, yeah, they can get snuffed out. I can be snuffed out tomorrow. It doesn't matter to me. I got enough out there now, not worried about it over the years. There's enough more people picking up on it. But I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to slow down. It's going to get even more scarier because I'm getting... I was up looking at the new place today for... we got to make sure we can get the highest speed connection you can get there. That should be a lot of fun. Nice big fireplace. Lots of woodwork and stone work around that. I'll put the chairs up alongside that, I guess, for videos. That'll be pretty cool. And... Um, I ain't going away at all. I'm at it all day, every day. I don't stop. There's nothing else on none of my computers. And I've had five computers destroyed by hackers over the last number of years. I mean, destroyed. And, you know, my computers, each computer is dedicated to a certain task. It's a pretty simple task. That's how I do it anyway. I know you can keep up with it. Like, I have a computer. It's all... On one subject, I have another computer, it's all on another subject. And I always, if I grab it on another computer, I switch it over. So I can keep it in context all the time, so I can find it all the time, right? And so it's all right there. And you, you're able to stay on those subjects. And that's how I got to where I am right now. The fact is, that if we don't, you know, if we don't force this out there and make people correct what they're doing, if we don't call them out for what is obvious and is unnecessary and is actually quite uh, harmful at this stage of the game this late in the game we might as well give up and unfortunately I ain't giving up and I'm coming back harder every time now the night you know it's not supposed to be the video that it is that's life I'm not going to apologize for it Yes, all our, yes, Mark, there you go, Mark is right. See, all of our voices need to be heard, and they're all powerful, and everybody has to do that. Tank Speak Now TV, Tank Sergeant, Snool Up, yeah, I know, folks. No, I blocked them. You're next, uh, Newman. And I'll get around to you later, not worried about it. A little tired of your snowy remarks. And that's just the point, right? When you're dealing live with people... Um, it's, you know, it's hard, it's hard to, 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 to do the things that I do. It really truly is. But i got eight years experience. I've been torn apart by the best out there, and I'm still here. I come back twice as hard every time. I always do my research, and I'm not out to harm people. Right? I'm not out to harm people. I'm as honest as you're, you, you, you will not find anything as honest as what I am. I don't think you can. I don't think there's anybody out there as honest, truly honest as I am. I'm so privileged in my life, and I was that was why I guess it's because I was um, so honest. Uh, there was no, I was never, see, I was never in a position, right? I'm so fortunate, and I say that because uh, I, I I have been fortunate my whole life. I understand that. I get that. It took a long time for me to really understand that part of it. But I get that, that I, I've, I'm, I'm extremely privileged my entire life. It's, it's unbelievably so how privileged I have been, how blessed, how unimaginably fortunate. I worked hard for everything, don't get me wrong. I deserved it, don't get me wrong. I paid my dues beyond imagination, beyond anything mere mortal men can do. I worked 11 years on the ocean and I threw up all day long and I done my work. I never missed a beat for the check. And I never missed a day's work. I was never late. And I never went anywhere until the job was finished, no matter what the pay was. And so I always had that integrity. And that's why I, I've been so privileged and so fortunate. Now the conversation is about me. I just want you to understand, because I don't ever do this 
is I paid for everything I got the right way, the honest way. And but I because I'm in Canada I'm so fortunate and because I took advantage of the best opportunities imaginable. Because an old man one long time ago had said to me that whatever I wanted was dear, I just had to ask for it. And I took that to heart, right? I understood that. And I, I knew how to work that. And what am I trying to tell you here by telling you all this? Is I put that much time and energy into everything. Into my friends. Um, you know, in, in the most aspects uh, that most people can't even imagine of other people's lives. Because my friends are my friends. I drop everything I'm doing. And I'm busy all the time. But if a friend shows up, I drop everything I'm doing for that friend. And I give them 100% attention. There's no blurring TVs in the background, no music in the background. I'm interested in what they got to say. And when they leave, I'm back to work again. And I always spend a lot of time debunking everything I got to say before I'll put it up on the internet. And so that's why I'm so cautious of what I say on the live streams. It's because I put that much attention into it. And I understand I'm going to offend everybody at some point. Because a lot of things I've never gotten to. A lot of the videos, I got a few thousand uh, little videos there that I've made that I've never pu published up on the internet. But I, may, I, I always made videos so I can understand the subject, right? That's the only way I can articulate it, is I have to make the video, watch the video, fix it, do it again, and then I understand that subject so much better. And, but that doesn't mean I always publish up on the internet because I, I do such a shitty job with my videos that I don't publish everything up there. But at least I understand it. Right? And so now I can use it in the conversations or everything else. And so we spent the rest of the night. I spent, you know, the rest of the night talking about me, and that's unfortunate. And sometimes I got to justify that, I guess. Um, it's okay to share with people, it's okay to break a little bit. I used to throw, when I was 13, I would stand on the back of a boat all day or gutting fish, or pulling gear, and there's a hook every six feet, and it's tied on. And I would stand on the back of the boat three o'clock every morning in 30-foot ground swells, racing down those ground swells, and throwing hooks as fast as I can, trying not to get torn off the back of a boat. And then when the gear was coming aboard the boat, you're fighting the big ground swells, you know how the ocean lifts right up the boat up, and I would hang on to this ground line, and it's covered in the... Porky G's Man of War Jellyfish. And this will make you break out in rashes and itch. And so we all had five gallon buckets and you dip your hands in that. And you'd be pulling and holding onto the gear. And you have to get a lot of strain on this gear. And every six feet is a hook. And if you let it go, it might hook you and tear you apart. I have a hood, hats torn off my head, jackets torn off my head. A lot of gloves torn off my head, a lot of jackets torn apart. And I've done that for 11 years from the age of 13 on. And I used to carry four knives with me on the back of the boat in case I got pulled over the back of the boat. And I've been over the back of the boat. And it's the most terrifying uh, thing you can imagine. Uh, and I'm telling you that because I, I puked all day long when I was doing that. But I, I never missed a day's work. And I thought that's what you were supposed to do. And I just, I lived with that. Uh, and I worked on that ocean all year long, each year, perseverance. And then for the rest of my life, I was like that with everything I'd done. I put, once I start, I don't stop, no matter how bad it gets. And that's what I mean, you know. I, I didn't like coming out and slamming Busby, even though it was necessary. I didn't like, and so I, I didn't actually get in that video, right? I put the video with the headlines because I didn't want to. But I understood I had to because radon got nothing to do with the equation. And I show you headlines of all the radioactive fallout and everything else. So why would he mention radon, see? When radon's natural. That, to me, was a heartbreaking video to put up. And then Guntry, of course, tonight was like, she's this afternoon, I was like, I, I don't want to do it right now. I just wanted to throw it in the folder with the rest of his stuff. And then I said, you know what? I'm just going to... Because I can't... I can't move on unless I deal with it. Because now it's a problem. Now it's an issue. Now I got no options. Because that has to stop. 
that manipulation, that indoctrination has to stop a long time ago. And if I got to come out and do it, then that's life. So anyway, that's, that's it for the night, I guess. That's it for the night. I'm not going to worry about it. Such so like some videos are going to be like that, right? That way you're just not going to get through it. I'll say goodnight to everybody. But some videos, you're not, are not going to come out the way you want them to. Thanks, Annabeck. Cats Alive. Snool. Uh, Nuda Ways. Mickey, Miss Milky the Clown. Hi. Uh, I say hi to a few people. Hang on, I'll use this computer. Yeah, it's it's just disappointing that that's the way it went. And that the video never went down the road of Japan Rogue Nation. I'll have to go ahead and change that, I guess. And that, you know, when I come out and tell you something, I hope I'm wrong. Right? I'm not gonna like lash out. I read the comments and I go double check just to make sure because that is my biggest fear, that I make a mistake. And so I put a lot of time and energy and effort into making sure I don't make that mistake, because that's wrong. I wouldn't want it done to me, right? I would feel, you know, hurt if someone had done something like that to me and it wasn't true. I would definitely not want to be in that position where someone done that. You know, I would never want to do that to somebody without me being knowing for fact that what I'm saying is true. And so I sugarcoated at night, believe it or not. That sugarcoating is, that was me being nice. I can't say I'll be like that tomorrow night, because I can't. Because I'm loved with rage, unfortunately. Such is life. Thanks, Stacy Lane, Sydney, Mark. Yeah, it was an interesting one, I guess. Hi, Hannah. Han Henna Tapaz, I can't get that, sorry. Hi, Bob Smith. Thanks, Christopher. Monterey's, Janet C, Aqua 123, John, Sergeant, Snoodle, Kurt K, Catacello, West, Albert, Raquel, uh, Basic Data, Kathy Reed, Judy, Fukushima and Revelations, Elizabeth, Kate, uh, James, 42, Gary, Comfort Climate, Kerry Musgrave, DC Baboos, Candace, Mark again. There you go, that's pretty good. We got Scott Green. We even got Newman. I don't hold grudges. Stephen, Pamela, Amthurst. Yeah, but geez, we got lots of names there tonight. Pretty cool, folks. Mark and the Big Now TV. Zoe says hi to everybody. Cindy, Joyce, Kurt K, Wanna Be 24, Stacy Anderson. Never get a chance to say hi, Stacy, during the live stream. That's cool. Noodle Way, Albert. Albert, uh, there you go. That's pretty good. I'll come in and read your comments a little bit later. And I got bashed pretty good earlier, so that's okay. We don't mind. No big deal. It is what it is. I've been down this road many times before. Tonight I kind of digressed. It was okay, stream though, I guess. Once in a while it's okay to tell people a little bit about it, about myself. I don't really give people much on me. That's how people don't have ammunition to, to try to use against me. And because I picked on every country out there, there's not one country out there I haven't went after in the last eight years. I've had a lot of sites closed. And uh, this site here, Google, when I first started it, Google sent me a notice and said, because um, they had just closed one of my other accounts, and so a whole bunch of people had come out. I can't remember what the one, that one was, but everybody come out and found this account, and so everybody started rallying on this account. And two days later, this was a brand new account, Google sent me a message and I said, if I want to be partners, just click. And so I clicked, and I was a YouTube partner. That was quite a long time ago. And 